hello and I'm glad that you joined me again tonight and uh, we're in John chapter 19 we ended yesterday with the Jewish people in the courtyard asking for Barabbas instead of Jesus because of the large contingency that was there with the Pharisees and the Sadducees that wanted to crucify Jesus he didn't have a chance of getting out uh, because of the uh, clemency of the one person at the Passover. Uh, there was no chance at all because the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees had the deck stacked against him there. That there wasn't, uh, like I said yesterday, not many people uh, that loved Jesus even knew that he was there. It was so early in the morning. And uh, and so, then uh, Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the sold soldiers twisted a crown of thorns. Excuse me. The soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. And they said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him with their hands and Pilate then went out again and said to them behold I bring him out to you that you may know that I find no fault in him then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe and Pilate said to them behold the man therefore when the chief priests and officers saw him they cried out saying crucify him crucify him. Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. And the Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, because he made himself out to be the Son of God. Therefore, when Pilate heard this saying, he was even more afraid, and he went again into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer, and Pilate said to him, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you or the power to release you? And Jesus answered, You have no power at all against me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If you let this man go, you are not a friend of Caesar. Whoever makes himself out to be a king uh, speaks against Caesar. Then Pilate, therefore, hearing the saying, he brought Jesus out and sat, sat down in the judgment seat in the place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the, the preparation day for the Passover and about the sixth hour. So it's about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. They didn't lie, did they? God was not their king. The only king they had was Caesar. At least they told the truth there. Then he delivered him to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he was bearing his cross and went out to a place called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side, and Jesus in the center. 
Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title uh, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near to the city and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but he said, I am King of the Jews. And Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each soldier a part, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam woven from the top in one piece. And they said, therefore, among themselves, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it. whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they divided my garments and among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that's found in Psalm 22, which I had uh, told you before, was written 1,200 years before the crucifixion of Christ. Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen because he dictated it to David who recorded it in Psalm 22. Jesus knew every blow. He knew every stripe. He knew the piercings. He knew the pain. And that's why he sweated drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane was reported in the other Gospels because he knew the horrific torture that he was going to be going through but he said nevertheless not my will be done but yours father and he said that he carried out the father's commandments and we should carry out his commandments amen and uh Therefore the soldiers did these things. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cloopus, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, which this is the Gospel of John, and John doesn't mention that he's the, the disciple that Jesus loves, but uh, John was in the inner circle, the three. Hmm. And he said to his mother, Mother, behold your son, speaking of John. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. And after this, Jesus, knowing all things were accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, uh, put on hyssop, and they put it in his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Therefore, because of it, because it was the day of preparation that, that the bodies should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for it was the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, it was Passover. They asked Pilate that the legs might be broken that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and the other was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, and they did not break his legs. 
But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. For these were done that the scripture might be fulfilled, not one of his bones shall be broken. And so Jesus died before they broke his bones. And again, another scripture says, They shall look upon him who they have pierced. And that, I believe, is found in the book of Isaiah. And it says, And they will mourn for him as the only begotten of the Father. They shall not see him again until they say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I believe with all my heart that that will be at the rapture of the church because then 144,000 of the Jewish people will be sealed by the Holy Spirit of God to be his messengers to the world until the time of the end is complete. And so they will be delivering a message to try to save some of the people out of the Great Tribulation. But they will be going through the Great tri Tribulation. Those with the seal on their uh, forehead from God will be untouchable. And so that's a promise for them that God will restore the Jewish people and bring them through and set them back up in the land. And he promises he will do that and he will do that because he is true to his word. And uh, after this, Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fearing the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take him away or take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. And if you don't remember Nicodemus, he came in John chapter 3, and Jesus told him, John 3, 16, and told him that he must be born again. And uh, so, if you don't know that, please go read that. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's whosoever is you, if you choose him, uh, believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is God's promise. That if we uh, confess Jesus Christ is our Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him up from the dead, you will be saved. If he's your Lord, you listen to him. And keep his commandments. We've talked about that. Uh, and so they took the body and uh, in the spices, and uh, they said they took the body of Jesus and bound it with strips of linen and with the spices and a hundred pounds of spices, as is the custom of the Jews, uh, to, is to bury. Now, the a place where they, excuse me, now, the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, which no one had been laid. So there they laid Jesus because of the Jewish day of preparation, for the tomb was nearby. It was already getting dark, of course. It was the 
sixth hour, six o'clock at night, uh, when he died. And so they had to take him off quickly and get him into the tomb by sunset, and they did it. And, uh, and so uh, one of the other Gospels says that the women followed behind and took notice of the tomb where Jesus was laid. So they knew where it was at, it was close by, a uh, brand new tomb, easily identifiable. The Jewish people put a guard there uh, to make sure that Jesus, uh, they, they didn't steal the body of Jesus away. So there was a Roman guard put there that uh, Jesus will find out. We'll make it out even with the guards there. But that's on Easter Sunday, which is coming up next Sunday. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna get to Easter Sunday tomorrow in a reading. And I hope that you do join me in reading the Gospel of John. We have two more chapters. If you haven't been uh, in the entire reading of the Gospel of John. I challenge you to read through this book. It's amazing. It's the first book of the Bible that uh, God had directed me to read when I gave my life to Him, fully uh, coming back as a prodigal son. Prodigal son means that I had a fellowship with God and I gave up that to go out and do everything that the world had to offer. And uh, what was said of the prodigal son? He said, my son was dead, and now he's alive. Uh, and so I felt dead. I felt alive before I became prodigal. And then I felt dead. And I felt like I was on a highway to hell. And... I questioned whether I was going to get off that highway to hell, uh, and God snatched me off of it. He divinely intervened in my life in so many ways the year that I gave my life to Him, bringing people out of the word works to be a witness to me. And it is an amazing blessing to see how much God loves a lost sinner. I believe he reaches out to everyone. Some people harden their heart against the Spirit's call and refuse to listen. Even as Pharaoh wouldn't let the children of Israel go when he lost his firstborn son because his heart was so hard. It's a tragedy when people refuse to listen. It only brings calamity on their life and the life of everybody that they touch. Well, I pray that you'll take the time to think about what Jesus has done for you. He died, laid in a tomb for three days, and he rose again. And we are to be crucified with Christ. That's what Galatians tells us. Be crucified with Christ, Paul says. It is no longer I that live but it is Christ that lives in me. The life that I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. That is awesome. <laughs> he is an awesome man of God. I pray that you'll be awesome too. I pray that you have a great night's sleep tonight, even if you're already sleeping, <laughs> that, you're, that your rest is uh, heavenly. You wake up and have a wonderful week in Jesus' name.
Amen. God bless you.